This season, we take a look at the restaurants putting Malaysian ingredients front and centre as we comb the best of north to south of the peninsula for a true and local exploration. Oh. Chef on Chef, Malaysian flavours. Down south of the peninsula lies the third biggest city in Malaysia, the bustling Johor Bahru, home of the Southern Tigers and a growing following of fine food. Fueling that appetite is Initial JB, helmed by chef owner Ko Chin Hong. First impression of Initial is its heavy influence from world-renowned new Nordic restaurant Noma, where Chef Ko spent some of his most formative culinary years, training under the famed chef René Rizzetti. Our concept is the uh, modern European cuisine with like Japanese twist, but we try to use the uh, local body as, as much as possible. We want to present the people in the JB. The vegetable can be very premium. The best thing always come from around us. So this is the mulberry, so we will use on the menu, it's very sweet. His love for whole ingredients, perfected by a real farm-to-table culinary prowess. Because I lived in New Zealand for a few years, also the uh, Noma Compagan, so we pick out the asparagus, pick out the vegetable in the morning, pick out the egg in the morning, and then we just serve it in, in the night. So we don't even know what else we can use for the night, we just go to pick and then use it. Will all this training live up to the expectations of his three guests tonight? Ready for the dinner, guys? Let's yep. do this. Chef Elroy Lim from Willow KL, as well as Nicholas Ong, Jean-Baptiste Gourville. So for this tree is the uh, chef on chef table. So like always, uh, really everything is perfect. 200% uh, 200, 200 perfect, not just 100%. From his background in Noma, I think it would be quite interesting to see uh, what he would bring forward. A welcome drink awaits in the form of a watermelon kombucha, prepared by the same rules of fermentation as Chef Ko learned from his time in Noma. Cheers. Salut, cheers, guys. Cheers. Santé. That's interesting. And the texture also is absolutely uh, amazing, I would say. He didn't strain away the pulp, so a bit of body there. So let's see what's today's menu. Let's go. Chef Ko takes the opportunity to show off a local delight. So this is a juwakani. So we just take out the meat and then season with the yuzu juice. Also we got some sea grape inside. So we will fill it in the pai tea. A kui pai tea, but created in his iteration with zuwakani crab meat, sea grapes, uni and beluga caviar for a touch of luxe. And the visual aspect of it is really interesting also. Very co colorful, very yeah. bright. Yuzu and the crab, first flavor, very prominent, very nicely balanced as well, a bit of acidity, sweetness from the crab. He uses a bafununi, right? So the quality is there, the structure is still there as well, so interesting. So far, this is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Our guests are then eased further into Chef Ko's respect for ingredients in their wholeness with a Japanese Iwate oyster. Lightly poached and drizzled over with a little Beurre Blanc sauce before being topped with caviar, sea grapes and drops of dill oil. Good luck, I think one bite is a bit ambitious, yeah. <laughs> this dish is quite French and it kind of brings me back to my childhood. Because the oyster, since I come from Brittany, we obviously produce a lot of oysters. And the sauce au Beurre Blanc actually is my favorite sauce since I was a kid yeah. because my grandmother, she used to make her own sauce au beurre blanc. So the expectations for this dish were really high and I think that met my expectations. So good job, chef. The flavor of the oyster is really prominent though. The butteriness, that fat, the thing, it's a very nice dish. Hokkaido scallops take over for more sweetness. Served sashimi style for a taste of it in its rawest, realist form topped with uni, salmon roe, and dill oil. Slices of apple pickled in lemon juice lends a touch of brightness. It's very well balanced. That's like the crispness from the apple is very fresh. The sweetness from the scallop, the burst of umami from 
you know, the eggs, the uni. Very, very good dish, actually. Chef Ko shows off his seafood prowess with prawns next. Drawing out its sweetness is house-fermented calamansi kombucha foam, Siberian caviar, and chips of Japanese kochi. It's such a pretty dish, you don't want to eat it, you know? Yeah, you don't want to uh, deconstruct it. Yeah. yeah. I think Noma influenced a lot of his cooking. A lot of fermentation going on like in, in components like using kombucha as foam, uh, making his own koji. Temperature, slightly warm uh, cauliflower. Puree with cold prawn, I think we have been very interesting. So next course will be the egg dish. Things switch to bolder, earthier flavours with an onsen egg, carefully poached and dropped over a nest of sautéed mushrooms. Dehydrated inoki mushroom. For bite, there is charcoal grilled baby corn. Then we season with the, this uh, sake mirin and soy sauce. So it's going to be very creamy, a bit salty of the sauce. So for your next dish is the uh, onsen egg. So using the eggs, is a premium eggs from the Ipo, is the Alka Fresh Farm. And then we just low cook it in 61.5 degree for one and a half hour. The way to eat this one, just break out the egg. So you make the egg like a sauce and then in combination, uh, other things to eat together. Enjoy. Thank you, Chef. All right, guys, with a little surprise, straight from Cognac. My favorite, Martel Cordon Bleu. I invite you guys to discover the richness of the flavors that are in a glass of Cordon Bleu. Um, to be completely honest and frank with you guys, this is my favorite cognac ever. It's a perfect cognac to pair with a lot of foods, many different dishes, many different flavors, and I let you enjoy this one. And later we'll be having it with the black cod. I think that's gonna be also a very interesting pairing. Okay, great. So he was mentioning that one of the ingredients comes from the market from this morning, is it? Which one? Uh, the beans from the farm this morning. This is such a good dish, man. Mushroom, Asutake has its own aroma. aroma. Yeah. And that with all the other mushrooms and the egg. The flavors is bang on, like great emulsion. Like the umami from all the mushrooms is just... Yeah. And then the creaminess and the freshness of the egg, like... It was very well. A wild tiger prawn takes center stage. So you don't want to overcook it, so you have two texture of the prawn. Charcoal grilled to the perfect taste and texture. But it is its sides that Chef Co wants you to pay attention to. White asparagus poached in milk and butter and a blanket of edible fresh rose petals. So here's your next courses. It's the tiger prawn. So we use the uh, local tiger prawn. It's the wild caught tiger prawn. I would say that the roses is more important than the prawn. When I was in Norma, I really like the roses. So we just go out for foraging, and then we pick out the roses from the beach. This is very, very tasty. It's very, very tender. So I want to find something else in the Malaysia, and then I find everywhere. There is no one else have the edible roses. So I just asked my farmer to grow it. So we spent like a year and a half to figure out how to grow the roses in Malaysia. It's very sweet and then the aroma is very good. So hope you guys enjoy the roses. All right, guys. So at Martel, we are all about playfulness. And we love to get our guests to make their own dish. And what I'm going to propose you now is to live an experience and to decide how much Martel you want to spray on top of the dish there we go, and you guys should be tasting the fruitiness of Martel VSOP. Enjoy. I think this is the first time I'm eating roses, actually, guys. I've eaten a few roses before. A lot of the roses has this very bitter aftertaste, yeah. but this doesn't have that bitter. It's very mild, and you get that sweetness in the middle, and, and it ends very nicely. Honestly, I could eat like more of these roses. They're actually really nice. Chef Ko ups the ante with a foie gras and unagi snack next. Served on a sable breton for bite, 
and topped with thin slices of sweet radish and generous shavings of black truffle. This a uh, summer or white truffles, is it? No, these are uh, autumn truffles. Yeah. Can I do it in one bite? I don't, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to waste it by eating it in one bite, you know? But first, let me try the truffles by itself. You really get this earthy flavor yeah. that you are looking for in a truffle. I have very mixed emotions about this dish. Like, I don't know how to explain how I feel about it. It's a good dish. And it feels like something that would happen. It's like French cuisine in like 50 years. You know what I mean? It, it, it has a very modernistic take to it. It's really hard to explain. More meat awaits our guests with the next dish. An A5 Wagyu beef from Kagoshima, grilled over charcoal fire and served with a rainbow selection of organic farm fresh vegetables. It's just something to match with the, the vegetable. Well, people normally they're doing like do something else to mess up beef, but it's like we got a very nice vegetable here. I want to showcase my our vegetable, not just our A5 beef. You vegetable not just for plastic bag, you know, it's just like you open and then you can have it, then it's very hard to grow and then take a lot of time and a lot of love. It's not an easy job for a, for a farmer. So our way is like present how high is a farmer. So we just try to put their produce in the fire that into the next level. So here's your main courses. It's the FI, FI Wagyu beef from Kagoshima. But the main thing is not the FI Wagyu beef, it's all our vegetable. It was uh, interesting is like, peppercorn sauce is such a traditional preparation for a steak pairing sauce and like I think it's really fallen out of fashion. I see you guys are following the recommendations of the chef. You are starting with the vegetables. I couldn't help but eat one of the pieces of the A5 like, Wagyu. I personally think this could have actually just been two separate dishes. I think all the vegetables could have just been its own dish and the meat and the asparagus as a separate dish. I feel the pumpkin puree is the hardest to eat with anything else. Like that is amazing on its own. A lot going on and not sure what to mix with which. Things begin to take a sweet turn with fresh persimmons, served as a whole fruit containing more persimmon sorbet within sweetened with farm wild honey, slow cooked with Martel XO for complexity. For more boldness, it is paired with more XO on the side for full appreciation. The nose is very intense. And if I had to use only one word to describe Martel XO to you, is intensity. And I think it's good that they boiled out all the flesh instead of having to dig into the fruit itself. Like this is a very good persimmon preparation. Chef Ko's sweet end to the meal comes in the form of a walnut sorbet. Maybe you guys will think about why the caviar go with the ice cream. Because I, I like something salty with the uh, sweetness. This is like a luxury caramel ice cream. Enjoy. You, chef. This restaurant is the second time I had beluga caviar. I think, I think the cheesiness, right, comes from, from the salinity of the caviar as well. But when you try it with the caviar, it comes out almost a bit cheesy. This with the ice cream, this goes really well. Actually. A meal that looks so much into the fruits of the land deserves to be capped off with a drink. Very thank you, chef, for the uh, dinner. Our pleasure, and as we say in French, santé. 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 <laughs> Initial is not only Chef Co's outlet for his culinary vision, but also a platform for him to put front and center the best that his hometown, Johor Bahru, has to offer. Throughout the menu tonight, I can see a lot of his experience in uh, Noma and fermentation uh, from Johor as well. So it, it's uniquely something his own as well. Absolutely fantastic. From the beginning to the end. We didn't go through a culinary journey. I think we went through a culinary marathon, literally. Well, for me, I really enjoyed how he has paid homage to local ingredients in the right way. Presentation and like, and his plates were very beautiful as well, so. 
For me, the GoPro is the frankness and then how you present it. For me, it's like less is more. Driven by his love for natural ingredients and a belief that Malaysia has a lot more undiscovered potential to offer, Initial is but his initial foray to bringing local fine cuisine to the limelight. Chef on Chef is brought to you by Martel. Drink responsibly. Thank you for watching this uh, Chef on Chef episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. First class is giving two lucky cover to dining in Indonesia. Log on to firstcast.com.my to win.